Hey there, this video is gonna be a quick look at the TT Artisan 7.5 millimeter F 2.0 fisheye lens for APS-C sensors. Full disclosure, TT Artisan did send me this lens to review, but they didn't pay me anything. They don't get to see this video before it goes up, so the opinion about it is my own, but I just wanna be really transparent with all of you. It comes in a wide variety of mounts, but right now I'm testing out the RF mount version, and this is on the Canon R7, which I think is a great pairing because the R7 is a fantastic camera with an APS-C sensor. There's a lot of really neat things about this lens, but first of which is the price. It is $140. So to get your attention, <laughs> it's also an all metal build and feels great in the hands. But it is a very unique lens and can't be used in a lot of situations. So as I said, it's a seven and a half millimeter lens, which is super wide. So when you apply that 1.6 times crop that's in cameras like the R7, then you get a 12 millimeter full frame equivalence, which is still a super wide lens. So you can see how close I am to the camera and also you can also see that the background is quite distorted. So it does give you a unique look that can't be used in all situations, but there are a lot of times where you could be stuffing this camera in a tight spot, maybe in a vehicle in the corner of a room, and you wanna get a different look to it because it does have a lot of distortion. As you get close to the lens, you can see that it looks very different. And this, as I said, this isn't used for all situations, but it is a very, very cool lens. And I wanna share this with you. One thing I wanna point out right off the bat is that this is a completely manual lens. So manual aperture, manual focus, kind of expect that at this price point. And also you probably know that Canon is preventing third-party manufacturers from making autofocus RF lenses. So we have some manual lenses out there. This is a great option. Now, a lot of you may not be comfortable with manual focus, but I think it's really cool to experiment with and learn and practice with every once in a while. Even myself, I do rely on autofocus a lot when I'm filming myself, but when I'm out hiking and doing B-roll, I'm often using manual focus, so I'm not like scared of it. I think it's good to practice every once in a while, but if you're using a lot of quick moving subjects and you're not comfortable with it, I totally get it. But again, for this price, it might be worth checking out. So the other thing that makes this really easy to work for manual focus is that most of these cameras have focus peaking. In fact, I think all of cameras now have focus peaking, and the focus peaking on the R7 is great. And because this is such a wide angle lens, I can just touch the camera and adjust the focus really easily. Now, one thing that's really cool about this lens is the minimum focus distance. So let me demonstrate that really quickly. So we go out to minimum here. You can see I get blurry, but look how close. I am literally touching the lens, like my hand is covering the lens and it's in focus. So the minimum focus distance is absolutely insane on this lens. Let me focus back on me. There you go. So a lot of really cool things about this lens, but just keep in mind about it being manual focus. There are a lot of interesting places to use a fisheye lens and your creativity is sort of the limit there. <laughs> and you know, in movies you'll see it where people are looking through the people of a door, something like that, or you'll see it like skateboarding videos or a lot of action sports or just giving you a different perspective in a certain situation. So one example here is in a car. If you ever try to film in a car, you know you need a very wide angle lens. And so using a fisheye is kind of a cool look because it sort of makes the car look really open and big. And I don't know, it's pretty cool. So this is definitely a good example. As I said, you can get some really creative and unique looks with this lens. So right now I'm basically like right on top of the camera and you can see that greenhouse behind me is curved and warped and kind of funny looking, but get creative with it, get some interesting shots. That's kind of what this lens is all about. Now it only stops down to F11. So you have a range of F2 to F11. And right now I'm at F11 because I'm outside and I can't get an ND filter on the front of this lens, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So it's, the shutter's over cranked just a little bit, but I wanted to give you a backlit situation here to show you what happens with the contrast. And I'll slide off to the side here so you can check out the flare and the sun stars because we'll check it out at f11 and see what they look like so you can see behind me here as I step in and out the sun stars don't aren't perfect but they're kind of unique also you get a lot of weird flaring and stuff so this lens is a lot of character it's kind of what you expect uh, you're not looking for a super clean image coming out of this lens one way that I've used this fisheye lens is for BTS or behind the scenes. I used it during a live stream a little while ago and it was a lot of fun. And when you have it sort of off to the side and that super wide angle, it really gives you like a larger than life view into what's going on in the scene. And you can see here, you can really take a look and see my light, my microphone, my background, my table, all the gear that I'm using. And it really gives you that perspective that you are behind the scenes and it's a lot of fun. You can have it off to the side like I do here and sort of a side view, or you can have it behind you lots of different options. You can also look at the camera to get a whole different look. So a lot of different options, but I think that sort of overly distorted wide angle look can be really cool in a behind the scenes situation. Now let's take a quick look at focus breathing. And if you don't know what that is, when you focus from near to far, that focal length of a lens will actually change sometimes. And the way you see that in an image, you'll see the edges coming in and out. So let's take a quick look. All right, let me focus back on me. All right, so lens has a little bit of focus breathing, but it could definitely be worse. 
One thing you might be curious about is whether or not you can use this camera for handheld filming, like vlogging. So I'm hand holding the camera right now. But one thing you gotta keep in mind is the distortion. Like look at that tree, that tree is actually really straight. And so let me give you a quick demonstration of how it looks as I'm walking. This is with no stabilization on whatsoever. And usually it does pretty well with such wide angle lenses, it does even things out quite a bit. So let me give you a little walking test without any stabilization and then a couple different options. I would definitely say it's usable for handheld vlogging, but of course, keep in mind the limitations of the distortion and being manual focus. In terms of stabilization, I'd probably recommend leaving it off or maybe turning the IBIS on, but I didn't like how it looked with the electronic stabilization on. It was kind of a mess. Anytime they're using a manual focus lens with an in-body stabilization in almost any camera system, you have to manually adjust the focal length in the camera because if you have an autofocus lens, the lens and the body can talk to each other and it knows the focal length you're at and it sets the IBIS appropriately. But let me show you how this works in the R7 because you have to go in there and change this. So if you go under the menu here and we go to the sixth tab over, we can see the image stabilizer mode. We're gonna turn this on. And then you can see here, you can manually adjust the focal length. So I have it set at eight millimeters because this is a seven and a half millimeter lens. So just keep in mind that you need to manually set your focal length when you're using a completely manual lens. Now let's get on to the build quality and the physical characteristics of this lens. It feels incredible. It's heavy. It's basically an all metal build construction. It's very impressive, especially for the price. So let's take a look here. Starting off, we have actually a metal lens hood, which feels really cool. And it's protecting the bulbous front element, which does bring some other challenges, which we will talk about. Onto the back, we have a normal plastic lens cap here. But one thing it does reveal is a full metal lens mount, which is awesome. We have some plastic inside there, but everywhere that you touch and use the lens, it's all metal. No weather sealing, but you know, $140 lens, totally expected. Onto the aperture and focus, the aperture does click, but it's very confident and feels good. The focus throw, I really love on this because it is very stiff, but very smooth and very accurate. I wish it was a little bit longer of a focus throw, but it's not a cinema lens and you're probably not gonna be doing large focus throws on this lens, being a fisheye lens. So back to talking about the front element, the reason that it's challenging for me is that I'm often using ND filters. So this only stops down to F11, as I said. So when it's really bright outside, I actually had to, uh, um, overcrank the shutter a little bit to bring down the exposure. You know, there are some clamp on ND filters and stuff like that, there are options which I don't have any experience with, but they do provide a small ND filter that screws on the back of the lens. So let me show you that. So this is a really clever design. I really like this, That's you can thread it on. Now, one thing about this that I don't like is um, it's really hard to keep your fingers off of the ND filter while you're handling it because it's just so small, but you can definitely clean it. And once you mount it on there, it's out of the way. And I think it's a really clever design. One thing I do want to say about this ND filter is that it's ND strength 1000, which I believe is like a 10 stop ND filter, which is way too much for me. I generally don't even need more than five stops of ND, maybe six, seven or eight. But when I went outside with this on there, I had the lens opened up all the way at F2 on a bright sunny day and it was still too dark. I had to then raise my ISO. So. It's a really cool design. I wish we had, maybe they gave us like a two and a four, maybe two and a four and you can stack them. Some some options like that, I think that would be really cool. This would be great for a long exposure photography and some other stuff, but for videography, 10 stop is just a whole lot to deal with, especially when the lens only opens up to F2. But overall, great build construction and really nice to use the lens. Overall, very cool lens, a lot of fun, definitely worth the money for $140. I think it does have a lot of value, especially with the really heavy duty build quality. The optics are not perfect, but it's kind of what you'd expect. It also has a lot of distortion. Again, what you'd expect with a fisheye lens. It's not for everybody. It's very you know, situational where you'd want to use this, but it's fun lens to have around and use once in a while. If you're looking for this sort of thing, I would recommend it for sure, given the, uh, the inexpensive price tag. Also, if you're in the Canon system, there aren't many good RF lens options that are affordable. So this one's kind of fun to just have around. Maybe you'll pull it out and use it in a different way once in a while. Anyways, there'll be links down below for this lens and all the other gear that I use. If you want to check them out, there are affiliate links and they do help out the channel. Again, remember this is available with other mounts. So you can check out those too. I really appreciate you watching. Please hit subscribe down below if you aren't already and we will see you in the next one.